Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a preset tutorial for some presets which you generate uh, inertia so that it can be used for bouncing or fake soft the body or fake cloth simulation kind of uh, stuff. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender and this is a very simple setup that uh, uh, I have a cube and I have a transform geometry which translate this cube with these keyframes to the right. Okay, so this is a very simple animation. You can just keep playing that, but it's kind of very boring. So um, a kind of a principle with motion graphics is that you need to have some inertia or jiggly effect. Okay, so here this is where I made this preset. This is trying to replicate the one in Cinema 4D. I think it was called a jiggle deformer. So uh, it's not a very obvious initially, but you can see there is a wiggling um, back and forth after it's finishing this uh, movement. You can increase the factor so that the inertia becomes more exaggerated. It's also possible that to decrease this uh, frequency damping so that the frequency of this wiggling effect will be much stronger. It means it will wiggle more times so basically this is it. Compared to older implementation of this external oscillator, uh, this is uh, very easy that you just have one node and it can already accomplish all the stuff that you want. Here, let's imagine this is a car. In many cartoon animation, which people may saw in their childhood, uh, is that uh, the car stops with the top portion jiggle more than the bottom portion. So how can we distinguish this uh, inertia uh, by the height of this cube? Uh, this is where this fourth can play around. Uh, in this part, we basically need to generate a mask from zero to one, from the bottom to top. And uh, we can generate with many different methods. Here, I'm just going to use a particular method of this bounding box fourth. And uh, we basically can see that uh, this bounding box fourth is using its bounding box to generate a gradient from zero to one on this x axis. We are going to make that into the z axis so that you have the zero at the bottom and the one on the top. And we plug that this fourth into the fourth. So you can see the top portion is definitely wiggle much more than the bottom portion. Actually, the bottom portion is staying because the fourth is zero at the bottom. Okay. So, uh, and then you can just play around the settings until you find something you like. This is also looking great. Okay. The principle behind is pretty straightforward. That uh, you have a simulation zone inside. And uh, as you may or may not know about the simulation zone, uh, once you output the geometry to the simulation output, this output will actually go back to the input and you're running this loop over and over again. This also means that the inputs can feed in information from last frame, whether it's a position or whatever other stuff. Okay, so if you have the last position, then you can subtract the with the current position. And you can use this velocity for the offset of your geometry. This is just kind of a principle. In reality, it's a little bit more complex because by following this principle, you will end up with a inertia with zero damping. So it will wiggle very fast and it's kind of very ugly. Uh, so basically, this is kind of concept. Uh, I'm not going to explain in detail about how to implement this frequency damping since you have the node group and other things. And it's kind of a long story, which I don't even understand fully. So basically, this is yet. Here, I just want to warn you several things that uh, this includes a simulation zone inside this also means when you are trying to render it, it will fail. This is a known issue. 
so basically the idea is that you may want to bake this simulation okay for rendering another important thing is the downside of a simulation in general that uh, you need an amount of cash to make it work so if you stop animation in the middle and you try to uh, change the parameter you will see this parameter change is not uh, actively uh, being shown on the top of our existing animation because the cache will be different so you have to just uh, restart this entire animation in order to see the changes and you play the animation again to see its effect this is kind of very annoying but uh, this is how simulation works and this is the current implementation within geometry nodes so you need to be aware of this kind of downside about the baking and restarting the animation in order to see the changes okay next uh, we are going to talk about uh, a, another example so previously we are talking about translation right now i would like to talk about the rotation here i have a uh, basically the similar setup i have a cube and a transform geometry to offset this origin and i have a set position and the rotator vector to rotate this uh, rectangle and it's kind of very boring as well so you may think that we are going to add the inertial deformer but this is, this is a deformer so it will actually deform the, the entire geometry a more important thing is that uh, this kind of uh, inertia is working on every vertices based on the previous velocity so in the view of this group node this uh, points may goes to this direction so you're going to have a kind of expanding effect and it might be more obvious if you go with the factor of 0 0.9 so you can see it's it's a scaling that's up so this is a kind of downside of this particular uh, implementation alternatively there is another node group called the inertial offset which can control this kind of parameter more precisely and here I can put these rotations and the rotation back so you can see that uh, I don't have the scaling up effect but it's really just about rotations okay so you can choose whichever one to work but basically the settings are the same and the principle are the same it's just uh, one is uh, working on the entire geometry and the other is working on the parameters here I want to talk about another downside of uh, simulation zone uh, previously if you're using the inertial deformer very likely that you are just going to put it at the end of a node tree so there is no problem with yet but uh, in this particular case this inertial offset might be in the middle of a node tree so I want to warn you that if you capture attribute before whether it's uh, 0.1 or other things then this capture will actually be lost regardless you will see there is no attribute 5 being created unless you disable this inertial offset this is a known issue with the simulation zone that uh, you cannot capture attributes before okay so the only way to solve that problem is to store name the attribute make it a 5 and then we take an S you can name whatever you want so and then you we call that back with a named attribute node and then you run this simulation you will see this number appears but if you look at this capture attribute you still won't see it even if you uh, reload this animation this is a known issue I'm not 100% sure if this, this can be improved in the future or not but uh, currently this is a kind of problem okay overall this new algorithm of the inertial offset and the inertial deformer is simplifying the workflow a lot 
because in the past, uh, if you're using this external oscillator method that you have to add all this consign function, you have to enable these oscillators. Uh, you have to tweak a lot of settings and you need to mix vector and do a lot of work with it. Uh, it's not very convenient and it contains some errors. So that's why this internal oscillator is a really a good one. I'm going to remove this external oscillator in the future. Right now I keep that only in case some people would like to follow all the tutorials uh, with using the external oscillator. So here at last I just want to talk about if you're following the other tutorial or you've already Follow the other tutorial. How, uh, what should you do to change the external oscillator to the internal oscillator? So I have a setup, uh, which is very simple. It's uh, similar to the Waffle Soft Body tutorial. You do not need to worry about the details of it because it was explained in more details for Waffle, Waffle Soft Body. Uh, but basically, the idea is that I have. Uh, such kind of animation. It's kind of very simple. You just have a movement of proximity four. And uh, this is very boring. So we are going to add some inertia. It's very simple that you just add the inertia of uh, deformer at the end of node tree. Then you have this jiggling effect and a waving effect. And you can play around parameters, of course, then it looks kind of more interesting or less interesting, depends on what you want. Uh, really, you can do whatever you want to make it uh, for your purposes. But basically, this is it. Very simple and convenient. But there is a one specific case, which is a spider web tutorial. So here, let's go to the end node tree of these spider web tutorials. Um, at the end of the tutorial, it may look like this. Uh, right now, the node tree is a little bit updated with uh, the 4.1 version of this preset because we're using node linking. But anyway, uh, it looks kind of ugly, but it's still working. The only thing which is not working is that uh, this the end of a spider web should stick with the wall, but you can see it's also extruding out. This is simply because that uh, this inertial deformer is using the internal oscillator compared to the external oscillator. So if you turn off this factor to zero, then you are using the external oscillator. So now I'm uh, reproducing the effects from all the tutorials. But what if you are new from this entire setup, you are following the older tutorials and you do not want to use this external oscillator. What should you do? So here, let's go to the end of node tree uh, from the spider web tutorial. And at the end of node tree, it may look like this. And uh, there is a chunk of whatever stuff uh, from this uh, inertial of uh, inertial deformer. And uh, if you're opening the older file, with the existing node tree, it will look like this. Everything is updated and it's kind of working. Uh, you still have a kind of a jiggle effect, but the fourth is not a function properly. This is only because this external oscillator is only working when the factor is zero. So now it's working. So if you have all the setup, you can keep that as it is. Uh, but just so you know that I'm going to remove this external oscillator someday in the future. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, how to uh, use the new setup. And uh, I was thinking a lot how to introduce this part because the tutorial was a kind of a chaotic. So let's remove everything. Uh, let's remove this inertial object. So we have the most basic parts of this setup that uh, I'm basically just having this animation, which is very, very boring. This is too boring. And we're going to update that with the inertial deformer. So here, let's add a new inertial deformer. And if you play this animation, you can see there's a kind of a jiggling event already occurring. 
but obviously the end point is not sticking to the wall. So I'm going to add a fourth using this end point selection. And I want this jiggling event to only occur for the points outside this end point. So now if I plug this fourth, you can see uh, the end point is still stick with the wall, but the rest of the point is actually extruding out. So this is kind of okay. Uh, you can trigger the parameters to uh, make the jiggling event smaller or bigger. But I think this is tolerable and I can actually accept this result. Uh, the part which is, becomes tricky is that we need a set position to add a noise after this inertia. So let's add a noise 3D. And then we plug the color into the offset. So this noise is constantly put to the everything. So here there are several things we can do. One is we can construct a fourth uh, using the same concepts. And another thing is I'm going to use this inertial velocity. And then we, com uh, we convert this inertial velocity into a float value. And then we can multiply it with the previous four we have. So now it may not be very obvious, but if you increase the scale, let's increase the frequencies, and we are going to set a constant evolution to this spider web. So let's increase a time four. I'm going to take the factor into five so that it wiggles very fast. So you can see that when this spider web is shooting, there is a kind of wiggling events occurring and there is a very huge uh, deformations when it's hitting the wall. So basically this is it. Uh, and uh, this lens may be very small. Sometimes you can clamp that and make the one more exaggerated. Okay, this is too much. So let's decrease the scale a little bit. So it looks like this. It might be better if I pull out the origin a little bit further so that it's more obvious. But this is basically it. The rest is tweaking parameters and other things. And as mentioned uh, in the spider web tutorials, there are a lot of more things that you can do with this concept. But basically this is the prototype of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.